Hello guys, this is Justin Bibeled and welcome to this episode of Don't Panic, It's Organic. Ilalaban kahit kanino, oo, simple lang ako at malabo mong magtipuhan Kaya okay nang kahit sa FB mo lang mapusuan kasi Di na mapigilan ang sariling mapaibig sa iyo Ano ba to? Gusto ka laging mak- So hello guys, our next topic would now be about uh, geometric isomers. So what are these geometric isomers? So because of the, uh, because your alkenes or your uh, your alkenes contains the carbon to carbon double bonds, this act, there, there is actually what we call the restriction or for the rotation of that uh uh, or for that area, or for that carbon to carbon double bonds, or for that unsaturation, okay? And this restriction for the rotation is actually partially responsible for the conformation of the alkanes, and hence, it's actually also why, uh, why biological molecules have actually uh, important activities or have a significant effects on on the living organisms it's because of its uh of the conformation of the alkenes or which actually uh their geometric isomers okay so what are these geometric isomers so just like your uh, cycloalkenes which are actually also restricted on the rotation so we can also do it so how why how can we distinguish the Ge geometric isomers for or the restriction of the rotation for cycloalkanes but we name it as uh, cis and trans am i right and also it's also the same for alkenes so because of the restricted in rotation so your geometric isomers for alkenes would also form a cis trans isomers okay why does this uh, restriction in rotation are actually distinguished or determined in the in the molecule. So, like for example, of this, so this is actually the uh, the the composition of the double bonds for the car for the alkenes. You have carbon to carbon double bonds. So you can actually uh, more de uh, detailed on the explanation of this is on uh, sp sp two and sp three hybridization. On my topic, it is actually also found in my uh, YouTube channel <coughs> so you can uh, actually uh, click on that and view the video about sp2 hybridization so you will know that the carbon to carbon double bond is actually contains a pi bond this pi bond are actually uh, an mtp orbital so this actually uh, mtp orbital which are actually uh, uh, these are actually and hybridized and therefore forms a side to side uh, overlap with the mtp orbital of this carbon and that carbon so because of this mtp orbital and there is a what we call a, a, a side to side overlap it actually forms a pi bond okay so there's an overlapping uh, orbital here for the 2p mt orbital for both of this carbon and how about this one this is actually a sigma bond because this is actually as a head-to-head -head overlap for the band or for the orbital of your carbon and this carbon there okay so this region here is actually what we call a hybridized orbital which is they form a bond which is a very strong bond and that's what we call a sigma bond so this single bond here is actually called a sigma bond and because it's a double bond so we'd expect that you have one pi bond and the other one is also one sigma bond so more on detail for this uh, bonds like pi bonds and sigma bonds are on my uh, videos that that i also posted on my youtube channel about sp and sp2 and sp3 hybridization so how does this bonds form so you can check that out on my channel okay so always remember that your carbon to carbon double bond contains one sigma bond and one pi bond Okay, because of these geometric isomers, I told you already that the cis-trans isomers are actually formed. 
for alkenes. So how do we uh, name the cisgender isomers for alkenes? Okay, so as what I have already told you that if it is a cis, then therefore the components or the the atoms are actually on the same side. Okay, if it is a cis. However, if it is a trans, then therefore the atoms are actually on the opposite sides of the double bond. So how do we do that? Okay, for example, for example, so in this case, you have a carbon to carbon double bond. So to determine that your compound has actually a cis trans isomer is you need to form a line here. Okay. You have to form a line there, so you're not breaking the carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bond, but you just need to check if whether uh, your compound has a cis-trans isomers. So by doing that, you look at the side of this and the other side, okay? So if both of these atoms are actually different, which actually reflects on the other side, and both of them are also different, so... If both of these atoms are actually different, then you would expect that this uh, compound has actually a cis trans isomer. Okay, so so if both of if you find that uh, that this atom is actually on the same side with the other carbon, okay, that carbon there. So this carbon, the chlorine is actually uh, uh, like. It's actually there, okay, in that side. And also this chlorine there is also on that side. And they're actually on the same side. So therefore, you would expect that this is a cis, okay? Then you would, this hydrogen also is also on the same side, but but not of that, more on the hydrogen, but also on that chlorine, okay? That chlorine is also on the same side for the other chlorine. <coughs> so that is actually a cis. Okay, then you name the compound that is actually 1, 2. So it's dichloro. So it's actually 1, 2 dichloro ethene because it's a two carbon uh, double bond, carbon to carbon double bond. So this is an ethene. And you have a carbon number 1 with chloro and carbon number 2 with chloro. So that is 1, 2 dichloro. Okay, so it's a cis because both of the chlorine are actually on the same cell, same side. So, how do you form the trans? <coughs> so, by the way, uh, geometric isomers are actually uh, being formed because of the restriction in rotation. Why? It's because, remember that you have a pi band that is actually overlapping. Okay. So, you have a pi band there that is actually overlapping. Remember the, what, the, the figure that I also uh, showed to you? There's a pi band there. So, you need... The, there's a geometric isomer because you need to break that pi band first. Okay? So that there is actually a free rotation for this carbon. So if this is a free rotation, then this chlorine can also go there and that hydrogen can also go there. But since there is actually the presence of the pi band, so restricted, the rotation are, is actually restricted because of this pi band. So that's it. So for trans 1 to dichloroethane, so both of the chlorine are actually on the opposite. Okay? So you notice the same side and this one is actually on the opposite. So that becomes a trans. Okay? How about this one? Why is it that there is no cis trans isomer? So remember, you need to put a line there on both of this carbon. If you find the same atom on this side, like that one, <coughs> then therefore you would expect that there is no cis trans isomer or you will find the other side also the same then therefore there is no cis trans okay it's either on the left side okay that you find same atom or on the right side that you find same atom it's either of the two okay then you would actually conclude that your uh, your compound has no cis trans isomer Okay, so the name would be 1,1-dichloroethene. So it has no cis or trans. So you can name, you cannot name this as a cis, and you cannot name that as also as a trans. Remember, for cis, it should be on the same side. Okay, so if you're going to put a barrier there, 
So both of the atoms should be on the same side. And if you're going to put the atoms there, uh, for cis should be on the same side. And for trans, they should be on the opposite side. Okay? <coughs> so for example, so what would be the name of this uh, geometric isomer? You would expect, so naming, uh, rule number one, determine the longest continuous carbon chain. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there are no uh, a chain that contains this longest continuous, okay? That, that would be six and that would be seven. So you cannot number this as one, two, three, four, five, six because your carbon double bond would be on carbon number four. However, if you're going to number this as one, two, three, then your carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bond is on carbon number 3. And your substituents are actually found in both in carbon number 3 and carbon number 4. Okay, you have chloro and you have also chloro here, substituent. Okay, so you would expect that the name would be 3,4. That becomes 3,4. Okay, that is actually dichloro because they have the same substituent. So 3,4 dichloro. So this is a, a alkene, so that would be 3. How many uh, longest continuous? That would be 7, so that becomes heptene. So 3 heptene. Okay. Then the question would lead you to, is this a cis or a trans? Or is there, is there any cis trans isomer? So what I have already told you how to check if there's a cis trans you put a barrier there and if if you have different uh, different compounds there that is actually different right this is this one is different from that one and this also is different from that one and both and if if this 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 is actually the same uh, atom if both of them are actually on the same uh, sides and that would be a cis but if you notice that they're actually on the opposite side, then that would be a trans. So this would be a trans isomer. Okay? So that becomes a trans 3,4 dichloro 3 heptene. So very good. So that the name would be trans 3,4 dichloro 3 heptene. Okay? Next. So identify if the compound is cis, trans, or there is no geometric isomers, and name the compound. Okay, so let's go first for the first compound. Okay, let's determine if there's a cis or trans. So you put a barrier there, and they are actually different. Okay, this one is different. That one also is different. And these are actually the same atom, which are actually opposite to each other. Then therefore, there is a geometric isomer okay what geometric isomer since these both of these atom are on the opposite side then this would be a trans you would expect that that would be a trans and what would be the name of this compound longest continuous you have one two three four and five so not one two three because you have carbon to carbon double bond is carbon number three but one two so you have carbon number two as your carbon to carbon double bond so one two three four five you would expect that this is a pentene. <coughs> then you have your uh, substituent on carbon number 2 and carbon number 3. Then you would expect that this is actually a trans 2,3. Okay? That is actually dibromo. Trans 2,3 dibromo. Then your parent would be on carbon number 2. That would be 2 pentene. Okay, very good. To pentene. Okay. How about the next one? So check if there is a geometric isomer. Put a barrier. So these are actually different from that. This one also is different from that. And both of these substituents are actually on the same side. Then that would be a six isomer. Then what would be the name? Okay, you have one, two, three, four, five, six. So you would expect that this is a hexene. Then your carbon number 3 contains the double bond and also the substituent. And your carbon number 4 contains the Cl. 
then it would be a cis 3 4 dichloro so dichloro then that would be a 3 hexene 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay so 3 hexene hexene okay and the last one okay check if there is a geometric isomer Okay, you put a barrier there. Oh, you find that these two atoms are actually the same. Then you would expect that there are no geometric isomer. Okay, the name would now be, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so that, how, that is how you number this. 1, 2, 3. So you can also this as 4, 5 or that would be 4, 5 because that, they, they are actually the same. So, okay, so by doing this, if you are going to number this as 1, 2, 3, your carbon to carbon dual band is on carbon number 3. But if you're going to number this as 1, 2, your carbon to carbon dual band is actually on carbon number 2. So this should be numbered as 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So the name would now be 2 chloro. So you have no cis trans. So the name would now be 2 chloro. Then you have also 3. This is actually 3-ethyl, okay? Because the alkyl here, which is actually a substituent, is 2-carbon. So you would expect that it's an ethane. But this is an alkyl that lacks hydrogen. So that is actually ethyl. So 3-ethyl. Okay, 3-ethyl. So 2-chloro, 3-ethyl. Then that would be 2-pentene, okay? Because it is actually 5-carbon which contains the double bond, so that becomes 2-pentene. Then you're done for this problem, okay?